Hi everyone, Happy New Year 2026. So the world is changing rapidly. Never have two letters in the alphabet struck more fear and uncertainty into our hearts. AI is ostensibly making what used to take skill, patience, tenacity, and years of education and experience to accomplish seemingly trivial. So now through AI, everyone can create code, make movies, create songs that sound like they were recorded professionally in a studio simply by prompting an AI. So what does this mean? Does it mean that we have to face the reality that certain skills are losing their value? Well, yes, but only to a certain extent. Why would anyone pay someone loads of money to do something that can be done in seconds using AI? However, just because AI is going to change the nature of a developer's job, for example, there will be far less typing of boilerplate code involved, from a learning standpoint, you still need to know the fundamentals. Because for one thing, AI will not always get it right. It will not always produce acceptable code. You will still need to understand the code that AI produces. Human judgment will always need to be in the loop. So you, as a developer, still need to learn how to code before you leverage AI to make your coding more efficient. By learning to code without AI, you'll learn the underlying principles, which are certainly far more important than the code itself. And you'll learn to code through the experience of code creation. And now let's talk about creativity, another important quality for developers to have, in my opinion. The infinite loop of AI slot will eventually cancel itself out. It will eventually disappear up, at, uh, up into the clouds, let's say. AI slop created from what came before might be fine for creating silly movie clips on TikTok, but developers must know how to transcend the AI generic slop whirlpool. And that is actually the underlying theme of this video. In 2026, you need to stand out. I suspect many developers are going to become lazy. Many developers and aspiring developers are going to become lazy and lean too much on AI. The key to being highly employable in 2026 and to be successful in general is to stand out from the crowd. The question is how as c -sharp and .NET developers can we do that in the AI age? I believe that in 2026 you need to learn to code perhaps more than ever. So what do I mean by that? Well, before we broach the subject, in the comments section, please share what technologies you are going to prioritize to learn in 2026. How do you intend to stand out this year? Of course, all comments are welcome. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments. If you're liking this video so far, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of newly created content. Please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do that at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will, of course, be greatly appreciated. So as I said, in 2026, you need to learn to code perhaps more than ever. So what do I actually mean by that? I think people who actually know how to code and who actually know fundamental software engineering principles without the assistance of AI will become rare commodities as the use of AI increases. More people, I fear, will become more dependent on AI and more ignorant of the underlying code and engineering generated through AI. And here's the main caveat. The AI may have only gotten it right to the extent that it appears to work, that your software appears to work, hiding the fact that there may be underlying issues just waiting to blow it all up at some point in the future. And let's not even mention the technical debt that could cost organizations millions. But ignorance is bliss, right? Live in the now. So in the future, this will make those who really do know how to code and engineer applications stand out from the crowd. Perhaps after years of AI slop and bad code, the value of those that are real engineers will be recognized as more valuable than ever. So yes, it is still important to know the basic coding concepts and engineering principles. Yes, the developer job has changed and will continue to change, but the way we learn to code should not change all that much. Yes, I agree that developers should learn AI-assisted development software and techniques, but as, for example, a C-sharp developer, you still need to know the basic syntax of C-sharp through firstly, perhaps, 
writing basic .NET console applications. Learn the basic syntax first. Write basic console apps to get started is great because you don't have UI related code muddying the waters as it were while you're learning the foundational c -sharp concepts. Of course, C-Sharp runs on a software substrate, as we all know, called .NET. And one of .NET's fundamental building blocks is its strong typing system, which has been engineered based on object-oriented principles. You have the system .object type at the top of the data type hierarchy. And all the other types inherit either directly or indirectly from the system.object type. So learn object-oriented programming. Learn the principles of encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. Once you are familiar with OOP, learn solid principles. Then move on to learning design patterns. There are 23 foundational design patterns established in the classic Gang of Four book, divided into creational, structural, and behavioral design patterns. Creating sample applications using these design patterns will help you to create clean, reusable, maintainable, extensible, and testable code. This is how you will stand out. If your code is just generated by AI, you may not understand the underlying engineering principles. Before you start relying on AI to generate code or debug your code, I strongly advise you to understand the underlying engineering principles. Start by learning and understanding the syntax of the language. The more knowledge you have, the more employable you will be. The more knowledge you have will help you with your prompts when leveraging AI to increase your efficiency. So put AI in its place, as it were, where it's a valuable tool that you can leverage to increase your efficiency. And my advice is to not to solely depend on AI to generate code and engineer applications. Learn the syntax of your chosen programming language. Understand why you are using that language. What problem does the language itself solve? For example, why am I using c -sharp to engineer this application as opposed to Python, Java, C++, Rust, or Go, or JavaScript? Understand the appropriate engineering concepts, for example, object-oriented programming in C-sharp. Then once you've grasped the fundamentals, learn the advanced features of the language and what can be achieved through their use. How can the advanced features be leveraged to benefit your workflow and applications? Once you understand how to appropriately implement syntax and optimally engineer your applications, you need to understand certain necessary ancillary technologies like relational databases, for example, MS SQL Server, MySQL, or Postgres. Learn relational database design using the principle of normalization. Build basic CRUD applications. So basic CRUD functionality, create, read, update, and delete functionality. Perhaps now create a CRUD application using a UI framework. My advice would be to start with WinForms. This is the most basic way to create a .NET application with a sophisticated graphical user interface. So learn the syntax and fundamental engineering principles through .NET console applications, i.e. where UI functionality boilerplate code does not interfere with your learning of these fundamental principles. These fundament the basic syntax of the language. Then once you can write code based on sound engineering principles, it is time to familiarize yourself with creating applications with sophisticated graphical user interfaces. Using the WinForms framework can give you a simple introduction to coding an application that has a sophisticated graphical user interface. The reason I don't advise you to go straight into learning graphical user interface frameworks like WPF or .NET MAUI is because these are much more complex frameworks. WinForms enables an easy way to create applications with sophisticated UIs. I would then focus on web development. Firstly, learn HTML, CSS3, and at least the basics of JavaScript. Once you have a basic knowledge of these web technologies, you can then learn .NET's best web framework, which is Blazor. Learn how to create SPARs, single page applications, to facilitate high performing user interactive functionality on the web. Learn Blazor's render modes and lifecycle hooks. Learn Blazor in conjunction with Entity Framework Core, which is an ORM, Object Relational Mapping Framework that enables developers to interact with a relational database using an object-oriented 
programming paradigm rather than writing raw SQL queries. Having said that, I would also encourage you to learn how to write at least basic raw SQL queries. You also want to understand RESTful APIs and how to create minimal APIs in .NET. You can certainly specialize in web development, but you can also specialize in cross-platform mobile and desktop applications by learning the .NET MAUI framework. You can extend your knowledge and expertise even further by learning how to create .NET MAUI Blazor hybrid applications. Using this technology, you can reuse your Razor components across web, mobile, and desktop platforms. This provides you with incredible flexibility where a team of developers can maximize productivity by using one code base across both web and native platforms. The more knowledge you attain, the more employable you will be. Remember, in 2026, it's all about standing out. So obviously, if you're at this level, I would say you are highly employable, but this video is also about standing out in 2026. So what can you do to stand out even further? Most developers, me included, just want to create code and engineer applications. We hate dealing with the fiddliness of deployment and automation of deployment. But in 2026, I would say it's almost essential to know at least basic aspects of DevOps. Know how to effectively utilize GitHub for source control and deployment, the automation of deployment. Know how to automate a CI CD pipeline, so a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. Learn about Docker files and Docker Compose, and also learn about creating GitHub Actions. Having these skills will put you ahead of the vast majority of developers. Understand how to include unit testing with XUnit. Integration testing and end-to-end -end testing into your CI-CD pipelines. Within your CI-CD pipelines, it is important to automate the implementation of well-thought-out tests that the code must pass before automatically being deployed to production. So we've now covered monolithic architectures. For maximizing scalability, learn about microservices and associated technologies. We've already mentioned, like for example, Docker. But for microservices, you'll also want to learn a technology like Kubernetes, which acts as a system for coordinating and managing large numbers of containers across a cluster of machines. You're also going to want to learn at least the basic concepts of cloud computing and get familiar with the main cloud services, like for example, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. As a .NET developer, Learning the microservices architecture, you'll also want to learn .NET Aspire, or I think it's simply known as Aspire at this point. Aspire is an opinionated, cloud-ready stack from Microsoft designed to simplify the development, observation, and deployment of modern distributed applications, especially those built on microservices architecture. For distributed systems, I recommend learning at least one NoSQL database management system like MongoDB, which can be used to increase the performance of distributed systems. I would also recommend learning a named value pair database management system like Redis, which is commonly used for caching functionality. This can also drastically improve the performance of a distributed system. In addition to learning REST and HTTP, you can also learn gRPC, which can be used for communication between microservice components to increase message transfer efficiency. I also recommend learning a technology like RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is a reliable and mature messaging and streaming broker, which is easy to deploy on cloud environments, on premises, and on your local machine. This technology facilitates loose coupling between components where messages can flow between components and be processed asynchronously. Of course, learn at least the basics of system design, for example, load balancing, caching, microservices, APIs, orchestration, etc. If you really want to stand out this year, cybersecurity is huge. At least understand protocols like OAuth2 and OIDC. Emerging areas like post-quantum cryptography, PQC, are becoming part of enterprise standards. I'm not saying you need to learn this, but it is certainly a good idea to be aware of what is on the horizon when it comes to cutting edge technologies.
And this video is about not only being employable, but also being highly employable and standing out in the AI era. 2026 might be a good year to start learning cutting edge technologies that will help you stand out in this rapidly changing climate. So now to end this video, to be clear, I'm not saying ignore AI, far from it. I'm saying you still need to understand the fundamentals of coding and associated engineering concepts. If you want to be a developer with sustainable prospects in 2026 and beyond. And you will also need appropriate AI skills to stand out in the AI age. You should certainly learn to leverage AI assisted development once you have gone through your basic training, as it were. Once you have a good grasp of the fundamentals without AI assistance. But once you get to that level, it is certainly going to be hugely advantageous to learn how to leverage AI assistance. GitHub Copilot is a great AI assistance tool to leverage for .NET and C-sharp developers. It will also be essential to learn how to integrate AI into your applications. For example, AI chatbots so that users can ask questions about the service your application provides in natural language. In today's applications, a user should be able to ask questions using natural language and receive custom responses that provide the users with useful domain specific information in natural language. So you need to provide a 24 hour human like domain expert. And you can now do that through leveraging LLMs in your applications. AI is not this terrible entity that will make you redundant. It is a tool that you can leverage to make you reach greater heights. It is also a tool that will help you stand out in 2026 and beyond. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 2026 could be the year where you stand out. Of course, you don't need to know all of the technologies discussed in this video, but hopefully this video gives you an idea of the technologies you can learn and the steps that you can take to stand out and become or remain highly employable. In the comments section, please share what technologies you are going to prioritize to learn in 2026. How do you intend to stand out this year? Of course, all comments are welcome. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of newly released content. Please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do that at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will, of course, be greatly appreciated. It would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Lon Digital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.